David Parfit. In this course, you will be given a creative insight into how tree houses are made. The classes will cover the technology and principles needed to design a tree house that meets your needs, along with ideas and skills that will enable you to build your own extraordinary tree houses. You will be given ways to approach most of the situations that you are likely to meet in planning a tree house and inventive ways of solving the problems associated with this fascinating activity. Tree houses are fantastic places. They're places for the imagination. They offer us a mysterious refuge from the everyday. A tree house will work its spell on you even if you don't climb into it. Just the promise of a secret space that you could escape to is a delight. Better still, climb into it and transport yourself into a simpler, more playful world. A good tree house works on two levels. From the ground, it should look intriguing and quirkily inviting. It should add something to its surroundings. But then once inside, you should feel securely cradled in a small, separate world all of its own. To achieve both of these well, it's important to strike a balance between building a sturdy structure and allowing the peculiarities of the tree and the location to influence the design. The process of designing and building a tree house is organic. No two tree houses are ever the same. The tree will have a big effect on the shape and the atmosphere of the structure. Having said that, there are many well tried and tested techniques for building secure platforms in trees that will provide solutions to almost anything you might want to achieve. During this course, I will give you all the information that you will need to make a basic tree house, one that will be adaptable enough for your tree to make its own and for you to elaborate on to make a glorious tree house. I will also offer suggestions on creative ways of customizing your structure. We will cover design considerations, making platforms for the three basic types of tree, materials and fastenings, and of course safety issues. Making a tree house is an opportunity to use appropriate technology and materials. This doesn't mean that you need any advanced skills. If you can saw wood reasonably accurately, drill holes and put in screws, then you'll be fine. It will help if you're flexible in your approach, enjoy finding alternative solutions and are willing to experiment and test things out. Some things you will need to do are going to require a helper, especially at the early stages while you're building the platform, measuring, passing stuff up, holding the other end of the beams, etc. You may have a particular tree or trees in mind already but I suggest that you complete all of the videos in this course before embarking on an actual tree house, as you'll be more familiar with most of the issues that you are likely to encounter by then. It's always a good idea to run through some design possibilities before you commit to anything. Paper is cheap, and in many ways this is where you can have the most fun, being extravagant, unconventional and creative without taking any risks. You may also head off some unexpected problems if you run through the design in your head first. Don't worry if you can't draw. The secret here is to imagine or visualise in your mind the design. And then use drawing as a sort of shorthand to remind yourself. Stick person style drawings are okay. They don't need to make sense to anyone else, remember that. Before you go much further, you'll need a suitable tree. If you already have a tree in mind that you want to build in, use that. If not, pick any tree as an exercise and use it to develop some theoretical skills before you embark on the one. Even if you're just being theoretical, it's important that you base designs on a real tree because your design will respond to its quirks. Trees that are good for tree houses fall into three main types. Single trunk trees that have no significant boughs other than the main vertical trunk. These can be thick or thin, although anything thinner than a telegraph pole can look very odd with a tree house clinging to it. Trees that have forks in them, or more complex crowns of large boughs. This is the classic tree, just made for a tree house. The more boughs the better. 
At its best, the treehouse is almost already there. Clusters of separate trees that can be bridged by a platform, including old coppice trees. Here the trees are used more like stilts. This is good for aerial walkways too. Each of these types of location have different considerations that I will deal with later, but for now it's enough to know that the tree you have in mind is one or other of these. A good look at your tree can tell you all you need to know about its suitability for a tree house. Is it stable? Are its roots firmly anchored? Is it large enough to support the size of treehouse you have in mind?